Welcome to the Smith Museum and Art Gallery in Stirling. I'm one of the gallery guides here and it's been my pleasure to show you around the wonderful exhibits that we actually host to you. Come visit the Smith to see the 1942 wearing dress worn by Boris Thomas Gillespie's daughter. The dress is also made for Spitfield film. We have the door of Carnac House. I always ask school children when they come to visit what they think this is for. We have lots of interesting ideas from the children. It's a post box. It's a cat flap. What do you think it is? Why don't you come and find out for yourselves what this interesting cutout door is in our Let me introduce you to which we believe is the oldest football in the world. It dates from 1540, came from Stirling Castle, and we have it here in the Smith Museum. Come along and listen to the great story that beholds this wonderful ball. This is James Smith of Dingston, the renowned agriculturalist and inventor of um, machinery for the cotton mill, which still stands in Dingston today, though it's now distillery. The drains that James Smith invent, um, made for this model village are still in place and still working. As I live in Dingston, I can attest to this. He also developed the subsoil plough, which helped the Sterling farmers drain the cars and made um, the farms very profitable. Here in the Sterling Smith we have some artefacts referring to our national bard, Rabbi Burns. Rabbi and his friend Willie Nicol visited Stirling and visited the castle and were shocked at the state of disrepair. In response to this, Rabbi had written some words on one of the windows in the Wingate Inn, which is now known as the Golden Lion. He was very scathing about the fact that the Stuarts were no longer the kings and queens of Scotland, but had been taken over by what he called an outlandish race. When he applied to be an excise man, he was questioned very carefully about his pro-Jacobite leanings, but he did manage to become an excise man in the end. Come to Smith, find out more about our national heritage and far more about Burns as well. This part of the Smith Gallery Museum, you see various items related to the guilds. Here we've got the, um, the robes worn by the Dean of the Guildry. And you see this symbol here, it's like a reverse four, which is the symbol of the Guildry. Over here, you see various old artifacts. This is the chest where seven incorporated trades kept all their documents, maybe their money. They didn't trust each other, so somebody from every single trade we need to stick the key in, there's seven keyholes, all clearly marked. Now here you find the Stirling Jug. All the Scottish measurements were based on this jug for liquid, for solids. It was supposedly a pint, but in fact it holds over three pints. Maybe that's where the reputation of Scotland being full of heavy drinkers came from. If you went up to a bar and asked for a pint, then this might be what they would get. Two of the people who are featured here in the Stirling Smith are George Harvey Senior, who was a clockmaker originally from St Minions, and this is an example of his work. And the artwork at the top is believed to have been done by his son, also George Harvey. Some of the artwork is in the Stirling Smith, and the artist would have made quite a number of smaller sketches when making the final um, portrait before being given the commission to make a much larger portrait. Come to the Smith and find out what is so unusual about one of these portraits. I'm actually giving you a little bit of a clue as I gesture towards them. Don't miss it. Come visit the axe and the cloak used by the headsmen to cut off the heads of radical weavers John Baird and Andrew Hardy outside the Stirling Tollbooth in 1820. And if you look at the axe really closely, you might still find some blood. Part of our World War II exhibit, a series of paintings made by a German prisoner of war was kept in a camp in Denny, uh, a small town nearby, after the war had ended. Uh, he thought he would be going back home, but he wasn't. He made these paintings to remind himself and his fellow prisoners of the country where he came from. So come to the Smith and come and see them. One of the greatest heroes of Scottish history. We discuss them in depth in the Smith. Please do come along and see the artifacts. They're marvellous. We have Pinwright, Wise in the Bridge, we have the Wallace Monument, we have William Wallace himself. Come and listen to us. We can make him come alive. That was William Wallace. Robert the Bruce Robert the First was one of our national heroes. Come to the Smith and find out just why in this 
cast off his skull, he's missing two teeth. It was also popularly believed that he died of leprosy. And we have here an indication of what he would have looked like, but it's now believed that he did not have leprosy, but another skin problem, for example, eczema and dermatitis. Come and find out more about Wallace and Bruce at the Stirling Smith. If you would like to book a tour with a gallery guide, please phone 01786 471917. We're waiting for your call.